Interested in open sourcing your project? Join us on a special Open and Microsoft episode where we walk you through the history of Windows Terminal and go over the decisions that led Windows Terminal being an open source project. We'll go over highlights, lowlights, and some tips on how you can grow your open source community. Okay, so uh, Windows Terminal. Um, so, so fun fact for the viewers, actually, I wasn't the um, PM on Terminal when it first started. So all of my reactions here today are going to be real because this is the first time I'm going to be hearing some of this history of Windows Terminal stuff. So yeah, Dustin, how did the Windows Terminal project get started? Oh, gosh, there's a, there's a lot of history here, Chris. I'm, I'm not sure you're, uh, you're quite ready for it. So Windows Terminal, well, Windows Terminal started as the Windows console back in Windows 95 or even earlier. Um, now, obviously, obviously, it's a completely different uh, piece of software today. But um, in our open source repository, you can you can still find comments that date back to 1991. Um, in terms of like you know the the Windows Terminal app, like how like did this project like get started was this something that um you know you came up yourself or was it something like um that came from like you know microsoft's like you know vision that's that's a really good question um so the vision for windows terminal largely came from the excellent engineers on my team and our pm at the time uh rich turner who is still a beloved community icon i still see him on twitter answering questions about um about our product, which is absolutely amazing, even though he's not been the PM for about four years. So yeah, it, it was definitely not, you know, we had a lot of convincing to do. Um, we always wanted to do something like this, but convincing management or convincing our leadership that it was worthwhile was was a bit of an uphill battle. Hmm. And um, were we always um, open source? Or did we start off like closed source? Well, so given its position as a Windows component, as like a deep, deep operating system component, part of the console subsystem, you know, one of the original types of applications, um, it was absolutely closed source, completely proprietary for most of its life. Um, fun fact though, back in, Back in 2007, um, the engineering team did a lot of work to pull it out of Windows and move it to a separate repository, at the very least so that internal um, contributors could build it without having to check out an entire copy of Windows and you know finish, follow all the esoteric build rules. Um, and the intent actually back in 2017 was to open source the Windows console, um, Conhost V2 for those of you who uh, for those of you who have been following along for a long time. And that never that never came to pass. Well, so internal. So at first, like you allowed internal contributors in. So it's sort it was like sounds like internal open source. Yep. Absolutely. Going with internal open source was was really a boon in the beginning because, you know, Microsoft people really like the console, but they also really hate the console. So giving them the opportunity to kind of get their hands on it, make the code base approachable, you know, separate out the kernel parts of the interface versus the user space parts of the interface, like just made it way easier for people to um, work on the features they actually cared about and help us move the platform forward mm -hmm. with uh, with what limited engineering resources we had at the time. I see. And, um, you know, did that um, help out, um, you know, you and the team convinced like management or leadership to like fully open source Windows Terminal in 2019? After a fashion, yeah. Um, one of the things that we had to do as, as part of the cleanup effort in 2017 was to remove as many uses of private APIs, for example, as we could, or um, you know, just make sure that we're following the publicly documented um, you know, way of writing software on Windows. Uh, of course, like, you know, 
taking a Windows component that's built in Windows linked against all of the you know private libraries, like that's that alone, that is where most of the work is from an engineering standpoint for taking an existing thing and open sourcing it, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right, because like you can't have like this lots of like um, users in the outside world they don't know about these private apis that we use yeah. is um did you know was there any like organizational pushback on the idea of open sourcing windows terminal absolutely this was not um this was not a hole in one by any means um we got so okay open sourcing something in microsoft at least in the Windows organization at the time, requires legal sign-off. It requires administrative sign-off. It requires leadership sign-off. And it requires another round of legal sign-off after we've crossed all of our I's and dotted all of our T's. Um, and so even that, even that was difficult. Like the biggest hurdle we had to, that we had to go through was like writing up the architecture, technical docs to convince leadership that this was one, just worth doing at all. And two, like not going to expose Windows, the product to undo risk, undo security risk, uh, that kind of stuff. So that that was honestly, that was that was pretty difficult. We started on that in 2017. It didn't work out. We started again in 2018. And between those two, uh, between those two points in time, the Windows Terminal uh, project kind of formed. So you know, the whole team was working on Windows Console, um, and we realized that we had some honestly pretty good stuff. Like, you know, we modernized Conhost V1. We we took the code from years and years and years ago and actually started maintaining it again and making it reusable, componentized, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, we, we realized we actually had a really good basis for building a new product out of it. Um, and, and that was, that actually ended up coming in handy because that was one of our big, um, that was one of the big wedges we used when we were talking about open sourcing with leadership. Like, now we have this new idea for a terminal. We, by default, it must be open source. People will not take it seriously if it's not open source. Mm -hmm. But it just so happens it's built out of components of the Windows console. We can't not open source those. And if we're going to open source those, we might as well open source the rest of it too. <laughs> nice. And that's that's what led to that big um, 2019 release. I remember seeing videos of it um, on the Microsoft Developer YouTube. I also remember um, seeing on Twitter that there is like at the um, build conference day, there was that video of um, you actually like punching in the git commands to open source yeah. like the terminal project. No, that was a that was a big we're doing it live moment. We did not prepare for that at all, apart from um, having uh, let's see, we didn't have any backups. We didn't have anyone on standby to press the button if if it didn't work. Um, the two things we prepared were we edited, we changed the repository settings to, um, to change the name from console to terminal. So uh, a little bit of backstory. We, like when we started on modernizing the console, just the console, um, it was also around the time that Microsoft started with, uh, the windows subsystem for Linux. And so we made this repository, Microsoft slash console on GitHub, to catch issues from people who are using it, um, people who are reporting you know, various various BT sequences not working with Linux apps or um, that kind of stuff. So we already had a repo. Um, and yeah, like the, the only things we prepared were the command to push and the button on the rename trigger to change it from console to terminal. Speaking of like you know op open sourcing the project, um, was you know was it difficult to start building a community like of contributors? We got lucky. We absolutely got lucky. Um, you know, in at Build twenty nineteen when we announced this, like you know we were 
this was the forefront of our new push to focus on developers. Developers are our core, you know, our core market. Um, and we, I think, struck at just the right time. Like people had been complaining about this, about the terminal, about the console, or I guess about the lack of a terminal mm -hmm. for the, the preceding decade. But even in, even in the week prior, you, you could find posts on Reddit on Twitter saying like, this Windows console thing is stuck in the 80s or, or whatever. And so I think, I think we struck at the exact right moment when people were paying attention. We, it, we got so lucky. Our community came to us. The people who were already filing issues on that repository came back and were like, oh, I see why it works that way now. New people came in and started um, started working on the internals of the Windows console. Um, actually, a, a footnote on that: one of the one of the things I think is coolest about this project is because of all that shared code. You know, you can still open up the repository, open up the solution file, and double click not double click um, F five run a build of Conhost. Mm -hmm. But that code is the code built in Windows. We mirror that back into Windows. So all of the improvements, this was a fundamental part of our, um, our doc for open sourcing it. Like mm -hmm. all the improvements that our community brought us to the console subsystem came back in Windows and started to release as part of Windows 11, Windows 11, the next update. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um yeah, no, we we definitely got lucky, and I'm really glad we've grown like over the last few years. I know like we're also actively making the new contributor experience a lot better because like all of our issues and like you know we we like mark some issues as uh, good first issues, and we also have walkthroughs to help like you know if you're whether you're like a student or like you know someone new to open source contribution, you can always jump in, and we basically have like um, tips and tricks for you to actually you know get started on like making your first contribution. So that's really cool. Um, so I want, you know, because we have, and the thing is we do have like a lot of issues. We have a lot of feature requests. Like what, like in your opinion, like, you know, what, what are your tips as a software engineering manager to actually like manage the, all these open source issues and triaging them? <laughs> it's a lot. <sighs> oh God. Um, okay, first, this is a trap a lot of projects run into. Old issues aren't bad. Old issues are not a burden that you have to feel every day that you're dragging around. Like old issues represent valuable contributions from your community. And closing them as stale or, you know, I mean, I, I get it. Sometimes issues just disappear or the reporter finds a workaround and shares it. But like closing issues as stale or saying like, you know, we manage our backlog by only having a hundred open issues at a time or only issues from the last four months is it's, it's a disservice I think to the community and like, yeah, it's, it's scary opening up GitHub and seeing 1500 issues, 45 to 55 pull requests. But every one of those things is, is a valuable contribution from the community. We, we triage, every week we're reviewing pull requests every day and honestly the i mean it sounds it sounds silly to say but the best way that we've found to deal with the incoming issues is to deal with them like have people whose job it is to just go out there and engage with the community make sure that they feel heard get more information close issues that don't repro or the person says like this went away Keep good hygiene, keep people in the loop, um, and your community will pay you back in droves. Like when you make people feel heard, they will keep coming back and they'll they'll file better and better and better issues. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And um, you know, I've seen it on my side as well, because when I go on like the tech side of Twitter and I see people tweeting about Windows Terminal, um, oftentimes like you know, I I can take like their issues or their pain points and move it over as like issues in like the terminal yeah. repo. Because there's like um, you know. Multiple, there's like multiple sources or multiple avenues where like people voice their opinions and voice their issues and you know, it's important to keep abreast of those like um, of those different sources um 
we're almost like out of time. So I do have one last question for you, Dustin. Um, do you have any advice for you know software engineering managers or, or project owners um, that are a little bit iffy about open sourcing their projects? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would leave with, I'd leave you with two points. Um, one, the, I'll start with the hard one first, right? Um, switching to the mindset of why not open source as opposed to why open source has been the biggest, like it's been the biggest boon for us. Um, a lot of the stuff that we've been developing for developers, seems redundant, uh, developing for developers. Um, like we've started with the mindset of like, this has to be open. People like our community won't take it seriously if it's not open. And so we've we've made the shift. Like we have to justify why something should be closed source now. And that that brings me over to point two. Like in the in the early phases of a project, especially if you have some old code that you want to bring out, like the hardest part is going to be case building. Because you can you can spend engineering time on cleaning up the interfaces, writing up the documentation, but like all of that is for naught if someone won't listen. And you can take like you can take terminal as an example, right? We open sourced a deep core component of Windows. And people came and people worked on it with us and people have improved it. And if we can do it, like I think your organization can too. And I think that I think that helps so much with case building, right? Like for every for every project, there's a niche that it fills. There's a community waiting to find, like waiting to fill in that niche and waiting to help you with it. Awesome! Thank you so much, Dustin. This has been a great like history lesson. Definitely learned a lot. Um, thank you, folks, for viewing this episode of Open at Microsoft. <laughs>